Hello everyone, welcome back to another Toyota video. This is gonna be a Toyota tech video for 89 through 95 Toyota pickups and also Forerunner IFS system. Uh, in this video, we're gonna be talking about deleting the ADD system or the auto system, auto, auto system front of the differential. Now, I made some videos of this before in the past, but I feel like I want to recreate some new ones and show you guys and kind of explain it. Now, I don't have a full understanding of how it works, but I know that by doing this system, it's gonna make it more easier. Now, keep in mind that some 89 through some er, some some earlier 89, like the 89, 90s pickups and foreigners, some of them already came deleted and more simpler. It's the newer models that kind of came up with all this vacuum system and such and such if your vehicle is add the way the way i like to think of it is that um there's a there's a vacuum system there's a vacuum system that shifts this lever we call this fork it's this actuator it's like a fork and i'll show you guys that in a bit and it will, and that's what kind of engages your front axle into four wheel drive and such but the reason why you want to delete it is it makes it more easier everything is now then mechanically and there's not you're not relying on electronics and vacuum system and such and such i also went ahead and installed the asin manual locking hub those are pretty much uh plug and play i'm not going to show you guys that because i made a different video already when you have your add your cv axle goes in here and it's locked to your wheel hub all the time so as long as your wheel is spinning your cv's axle so all you do is basically you remove this flange and then you install that um asin manual locking hub or when you don't have any use for a four-wheel drive you want to turn that asin hub free and that's uh, as long as your wheels is turning your cv is no longer spinning which is good because there's less wear and tear and some people also say <coughs> that you get a little bit better mpgs but um, it varies. So I, I already went ahead and installed those manual locking hubs <coughs> already on this truck. I already went ahead and deleted all the vacuum system, which I'll show you guys in a bit. I threw I threw some of those parts already, but I'll show you guys and you guys will know where they are because they're not hard to find. And then I haven't done the, sh um, the shift fork mod, which I'll show you guys that because that's really easy to do. Um, while you're doing all of this, like while you're doing the delete and stuff, make sure you start off by draining your front differential. It just makes it more easier. So go ahead and drain the gear oil. And then by the time you're done doing the delete up, up on the top of the engine, you can move down to the bottom of the engine. So let's go ahead and jump into the engine bay and I'll show you guys what you delete and uh, how you go from there. Oh, so don't mind this 3.0. It's currently in the process of a timing build kit. But when you look on your passenger side, it's really easy to, to find the ADD system. You have these two sensor, two sensor that were here. Go ahead, remove it. You can unplug it if you want to. I just went ahead and cut the wires off. I'm gonna go ahead and cap it on this end here. Just tape it up. And then you also want to remove any vacuum line. So usually you have these vacuum lines that go into the intake delete those and then you have the vacuum lines that goes to the front of the differential they usually go through the fender wheel they go through the fender wheel and then way inside of here <coughs> way inside of your uh, coconut right here you guys can't see it but there's like a big canister it's a uh, cylinder canister go ahead and delete that and it's easy to know because like I said those vacuum line goes to it and then on top of that you delete you delete those the vacuum lines that coconut that i talk about and then we are left off with the uh, actuator and now i'll go ahead and show you how to remove what and how to do the shift mod and uh, it's really easy to do like i say it's super simple but again you do have to you don't have to drain your differential oil but a little bit of it will come out so if you guys haven't drained your oil or haven't done your maintenance you might as well drain it and then like i said pre uh, put new fresh fluid in there i went ahead and installed my manual locking hubs already and again super easy to do um, plug and play these are news but i went ahead and cleaned them up already and re-greased them and put new gasket already super all right, everyone, so we are down here on the front diff. If you have a skid plate, remove your skid plate. And again, I said drain your gear oil. I already went ahead and drained it. So you also want to delete this main line. You guys see this main line right here? This main line has vacuum lines that comes up, and those are what went into these sensors and such. They have a 12 mil right here. Throw that away. And they have another... <coughs> 
12 mil right here. If I can get to it, let me do Basically all these Harlang here get deleted. You can put the bolts back in if you want to. Um, it doesn't really matter, but these all get deleted. So you just pull that and this is the long hose right here. That is, This is just a vacuum line. And the, basically how it works is when you shift, um, electronic goes under, it tells those sensor to suck it up and then it shifts this lever. There's a lever inside this actuator that kind of engages your four-wheel drive. So you can just pull these out, uh, pull it out. And what I do is I just take one of these hose. Um, I have some, some that are a little, bit, a little bit more cleaner. I just take one of them and just loop it back to each other. There's nothing sucking it anymore, um, but the purpose of putting it back together just that, is just so that things don't go inside of it. Now, this electrical plug here can be plugged off. You don't need this anymore as far as I know. So unplug this and um, I, I don't know what this plug is for but I know you don't need it. It's part of the system. So I'm gonna unplug that when I get my hands on it. Um, and when you do this mod, you still have four wheel drive light. So when you put in four wheel drive, your light on your dash or your cluster is still gonna come on. So don't worry about that um, because that's controlled through the T case. So unplug this and then you have, you got four bolts right here, 12 mil, one, two, three, four, it's a bit dirty, you can't see. Once you um, once you unbolt those, the actuator will come out and then I'll show you guys how to modify it. Now, if you didn't drain your oil, when you unbolt this, a little bit of oil will come out, about maybe a quart of oil. Now, um, the gasket that's used between the actuator and the main seal is just regular RTV. Um, if your has never been open, you're gonna see orange RTV, which is what Toyota uses. So when you install this back on, I recommend just using black RTV. Oh, and if you do have the chance, um, if you have the chance to do any of this before you start doing it, I recommend you guys just pressure wash it. it makes it more easier. You can see how greasy it is with my setup. So yeah, pressure wash this, make sure it's all nice and clean just so that you have something easier to clean it and work. All right, everyone, so I got the actuator out. Like I said, it's held by the 12 mil, <coughs> four 12 mil, and a little bit of gear oil is still coming out. So I'm just gonna let that come out and uh, let it do its thing real quick. But you guys can see right here, this is where we do the modification. So when you put it into four wheel drive, the vacuum system, it has a fork. And what it does is it shifts this lever, it shifts this ring here. So you can see this fork here. So when you're in two wheel drive, that's where it's at right now and it doesn't engage it. So when you put into four wheel drive, there's a vacuum system that shifts this and you can see it shifts it like that. It's hard for you to see right there. And if you go too far in, you can see the gears. So when you do this modification, you want to align this right here. You want to put it in like as if it's in four wheel drive. So that's how you want to do it. So if you went back too far, it's okay. It's you're not going to it's not going to go anywhere. You can still slide it back in but you can see how it is right there. Let me see if I can get, put more light on it. So see how that is. It's very hard to see in here, very hard to film. But basically you wanna leave it the way it is right there. And then what we'll do is we'll adjust the fork. We're gonna put this fork right here. Um, the fork here, that's the fork. We're gonna leave it in this lock position. And then we have to do one modification to prevent it from sliding back to the unlock. So let me let this drain real quick and I'll show you. Here's the actuator. We're gonna pretend we're looking at the front of the vehicle or as, as if we were inside of, or crawling how we were. <coughs> so this is how the actuator was. <coughs> um, driver's side will be over here, passenger side will be here. When you're in two wheel drive, this is what the shift works looks like. It's all the way over towards the driver's si <coughs> side. <coughs> now we went ahead and removed that, we shifted that collar to the passenger side. <coughs> so when we install this, <coughs> This needs to be in four wheel drive. So we need to, we need to keep it in this position. We can uh, shift into this position, <coughs> but it can shift back. So to prevent it <coughs> from shifting back, you just need to take something, you guys can see right there, take something and plug it right here. So what I always done is I always take some kind of tubing, any kind of tubing you want. Today I have some brake booster tubing. 
cut just enough thickness. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to fit in there tight. As long as it fits in there where this thing cannot shift back, you're good. So this right here will fit in there. I cut a little slit in there, and I'm gonna slide it between. I'm gonna I'm gonna slide it so it wraps onto this little um, this rod, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna slip a tie rod or a, I'm gonna slip a zip tie to cinch this together. So let me do this real quick and I'll show you guys what it, what it looks like. And again, you can use anything you want. You can put multiple zip ties if you wanted to. I just like to put like a rubber hose or some kind of tubing. Some people put like a hose clamp, but again, I feel like the hose clamp is a bit overkill and this is the simplest way I've seen or I've done it. So here's how it look. Make sure you shift it into the four wheel drive or towards the passenger and then put something in between. And like I said, I just put a zip tie. You guys see how simple that is? Just put the zip tie right between it and as long as this cannot shift back into the two wheel drive position you are good so simple enough all you gotta do now is just clean it up put some black rtv and then install the four bolts in and go from there now if these if this is your first time and um if this is your first time it can be a little bit tricky getting this in there i like to go from i believe i like to go from the, in front or if I don't go from the front, I go from the back right there and then I snake it in. So before you put RTV, I recommend you guys try it out first and see which way will work for you and which way to get it in so that you don't do it on your first time and smear all the RTV around. So try it first, see how you want to get this in there. It's really easy to get in there. It's like I say, it just goes in a particular way. And then once you know how you want to get it in there, then take it back out and clean it and then put black RTV and cinch it up and then also these two um these two tubes right here like i said i have plenty of vacuum tubes so i just take one of this and i just cut it to size and then i just plug it up so just cut it to size and just plug it back up to like that that's all you gotta do and you can see it's still draining out a little bit of oil so i might let this sit down like this for a little bit and let all that oil come out so that when I install it, it's nice and clean. So you see how that, there's still oil in there. So maybe let this sit for like 15, 20, 30 minutes and then I'll go ahead and install that in there. So that's simple as it is. I just finished installing the actuator. Went ahead and put some orange high temp RTV. Just make sure you put some good quality RTV. <laughs> and I'm gonna let this cure for 24 hours before I go ahead and start adding oil. So make sure you do add uh, your differential oil in there. And that's pretty much it. Now you could go ahead and test it out really quick. Right now there's no oil. So if you wanted to, you can test it out really, really slow. And what you do is, you know, you just lock your hubs and then put it into four wheel drive and then you should have four wheel drive. Now for some reason, if you don't have four wheel drive, then that means that when you were installing it, maybe the shift fork must have moved that, um, move that gear over back to the two wheel drive position that has happened to me before and i had to open back up drain the oil and redo it again so just make sure when you install it be very careful that you don't shift that um that collar back to the two wheel drive position now like i said again guys we move the shift fork into the four wheel drive position which is towards the passenger and that collar needs to be towards the passenger so that's all you have to do, add oil, and you'll be good from there on. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.